のよ。アミュさん、一人でレッサーデーモンを倒したんだよ。だった。僕の代わりに最強になってくれるものが、前世の役人どもが朝廷ででかい顔をしていられたように。So, we are on episode number three of The Strongest Exorcist, and I freaking love our main character, Seika. Like, I. I was a little concerned with him, not because of like the OP ness or him being an OP character, but him being very one note kind of thing. But I like how this episode kind of reaffirmed or reiterated the fact that he's not looking no longer to be the strongest, he's looking to be strong and happy. And this episode, he really made it a point that he needs a proxy. So he needs somebody else that he can kind of be behind the scenes of who's going to be the strongest and who will get all the ad admiration as well as all of the ire, which essentially just means like all of the hatred that would have that, that was kind of pointed to him in his past life. He even made it a point to kind of talk to the demon. Of, or, like, you know, the demon that was summoning, he was like, you know, at one point I was also considered the strongest in the world, right? And I like how he kind of made that a point, but at the end of the episode, he's looking at Amu, right? He's like, he's like, yeah, I'm gonna make you the strongest because he's like, you know, at the end of the day, if something, you know, negative happens to her, he's like, I will probably feel, you know, as I grow closer to her, I'll probably feel a little grief. But I ain't gonna sweat it too much. You know what I mean? They will, there will be another. He's like, you know, at the end of the day, Aoife matters to me. Uh, again, proxy type thing. He's like, as like a companion. And he's like, but I am going to be happy in this life. So I really love that. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, at this point, he's like, I'm gonna be with the hero by like association kind of thing. And he will kind of reap rewards of that, you know, the、uh, by association, you know, especially if he helps her and gets her stronger. And she rises to these levels. She'll be the, the hero. He'll just be part of the hero's party. Who, like, if something happens here, he just kind of, like,、mm, hey, I'll, I'll throw my way. Like, I'm going where the gold is, kind of thing. Like, you know, whatever. Like, you know what I mean? I'm just trying to be happy. He can, he can kind of make his way out of it. You know, you have, like, the hero, and then you have, like, the hero's party. So I really, really liked him、uh, kind of re. re Affirming that and retelling us about that because I think that's very important because that's his main driver, you know, through the anime and through the episodes.、Um, the rest of the episode, right? We kind of have like the school entrance stuff, but for a moment, I want to focus on this、uh, devil. Essentially, the devil gave us a lot of really, really good in insight and really good information. So, the devil's name that was here was the Metal Devil, and his name was Gal, Gal, Gal Galileus. And basically, Seika just messed with him the whole entire time, right? He knew that he was going to get killed multiple times because of this, this demon's or devil's strength. So he set up a bunch of body doubles to kind of really trick him. He was very poetic. He had a lot of poems that he was able to、uh, display. Was, I was like, that is very exorcist theme. I like, I like how we also found out that the devils, at least the strong ones with their specific devil eyes, can actually see Seika's、uh, papers that he has, kind of like how he does his summons, how he does his magic, everything else. They're able to see that. So that's a very good note for the future is like he'll probably get in a situation to where he's fighting with Amu or fighting these devils and they'll be able to see it. So he, he'll have to be kind of like、uh, upfront about kind of like how his specific magic and everything works, especially because he's going to be summoning a lot of things too. Uh, I like how, because, you know,、uh, a certain, at a certain point, Gal Galeas kind of thought he won the fight multiple times, but he thought he won the fight. And Seika straight up asked him, like, yo, what are you looking for, dude? You know, like, give me this one last thing before I D I E. You know what I mean? And Gal Galeas was like, yeah, let me tell you. He's like, yo, we're looking, you know,、uh, 12 years ago, the,、uh, an oracle on the demon side said that the demon, the, the, the hero is going to be born that will take down the demon king. So I'm looking for the hero right now. Uh, and then, you know, obviously, Seiko's like, yo, you're talking about Amu. He's like, yeah. So, you know, we find out that、uh, basically the demons are on the hunt for the hero because they have some kind of oracle. They have some kind of like, you know, person who can tell the future or something very similar to like Zeus and them, how they have like an oracle that kind of tell them like what's going to happen in the future. Those three witch ladies, kind of very similar thing here. So I like how he got all that information out of him.、Uh, then he summoned, you know, to, to take. To take him down, you know, after everything, you know, Seika's like, yo, you ain't beaten, bro. He's like, he ended up summoning a Misuchi, 
which was a dragon, or I think he called him a, a he did call him a wyvern. He called him a a, a weird or something, some a worm. He called him a worm. Uh, and even that devil was like, yo, even the devil king doesn't have a dragon, dude. What the hell is this about? Uh, and he summoned that. Uh, interesting enough, though, we find out that Seika is his body isn't matured enough to kind of like truly command these powerful beings to a level he was because the the dragon tried to get away. Seika like, yo, it ain't happening, bro. But uh, you know, so that's an interesting thing too. He's, he's gonna have to increase his power levels. Nine thousand. He's gonna have to increase his power levels because he needs to be able to control some of these summons that he's able to. But the fact that he's still able to summon these incredible, uh, incredible creatures is, is crazy. I also love how Seika kind of like gave him a little jab too. He's like, "Yo, I could kill you. One of my minions is." So he's like, "I don't even. I don't want to get my hands dirty, dude. I'm gonna have somebody else do it for me because you ain't even worth my hands." So I was like, "Damn, dude." Uh, and then we saw that Amu had actually ended up uh, finishing off all the other devil stuff. You know, she was there like like a hero, and all the kids were like, I hate this bee, you know? So I, I love how that got called out, called out as well. Uh, last thing I'll say is during the entrance exams, Aoife actually played second. She actually beat our boy Seika in the written exam and practical exam, uh, and I like how Seika was kind of like a little salty about that, but that's good for him to stay low, like up, you know, kind of like be considered upper echelon, but stay low. It's like, yo, don't don't show off too much, dude. Uh, so I thought that was really cool too. And the very, very last thing I'll say is that the OP to this anime is really, really dope. I don't know if you guys have taken the chance to listen it or listen it. I don't know if you listen it. I don't know if you guys have taken the chance to listen to it, uh, but the OP really reminds me of like Chinese dramas. I'm a big, uh, I'm not in the recent years, so I just I simply just don't have time, but it's in college, you know, many years ago, you know, and, and throughout my life, I've been a very, very big fan of like uh, Korean dramas, Taiwanese dramas, Chinese dramas, uh, you know, K drama, C dramas, all that other stuff. So, really been a big fan of that. And these definitely remind me of Korean depictions of Chinese settings or the Chinese dramas themselves, like the ones that kind of like took up, uh, took uh, a place in like, you know, historical China and stuff. Um, this opening really reminded me of that. I was like, damn, this is a good opening, right? It's like, it's like, uh, uh, uh. Yeah, it's like you go with it. It's like really cool. So I really enjoyed it. So if you haven't watched it, uh, definitely give it a chance. But we're on a really good episode of Strongest Exorcist, really digging this anime quite a bit. Things that make me laugh, put a smile on my face and go, oh, you know, that's always a really good experience. And that this kind of did all of those things to it. It really surprised me, especially Seika as the main character uh, being more than one note. So let me know what you guys thought. I'll see you guys next Saturday. Peace out.